Hey there, we're going to talk about common chord patterns, especially in relationship to guitars. Now, when I first learned about common chord patterns, it gave me a huge boost in my ability to learn songs faster, but also in my songwriting ability. Now, I find this a great tool for students as well. Common song patterns are short chord progressions, basically three, four, they could be longer, but most of the ones we'll be talking about are that short, three and four chords, that are used over and over in popular songs. And by identifying these patterns, getting used to hearing them, you'll be able to see them in songs and learn songs faster. Also, it's a great way to practice because by practicing short chord patterns that are used over and over, you're getting double bang for your buck. Not only are you practicing the chords, but you're practicing them in a way that they're very often used and training your ear all in one shot. So to start out, I want to give you just a little bit of music theory, or I should say a review of music theory, hopefully because you've seen my other music theory videos. I'll go from there to show you some examples of very common chord patterns. I'll only hit the most common ones and give you some demonstrations and some tips. Let's do it. Welcome to my music theory studio. Let's start out by talking about a major scale. Now, I've written down the notes of the C major scale here. It starts with C and then goes up the alphabet, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then we'd start over C. We can number each of those notes in relationship to the scale, the first one being one, two is D, three is E, four is F, five is G, A is the six, and B is seven. Now, when we number like that, we're usually talking about notes. But when we talk about chords, we usually change that to Roman numerals. It's a common thing in music. So I've written the Roman numerals up here. This is a Roman numeral for one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. You notice the Roman numerals don't all look alike. That's because for the chords that fall usually as a major chord, I've written a big Roman numeral or a capital Roman numeral, I guess you call it. And for the ones that usually fall minor, I've written a little Roman numeral or a baby Roman numeral, <laughs> lowercase maybe. In any case, the one chord in a key, if you take all the notes out of the scale and make a one chord out of it or a chord based on C, it would fall as C major. We also call that diatonic, diatonic meaning that all the notes are in the scale. You haven't altered or borrowed from another scale. So needless to say, you can, you can do that too. But a lot of the music written nowadays is based on a diatonic scale. The D chord is going to naturally fall minor. That's because if you just take the notes out of the D scale, it makes a minor chord, unless you were to alternate and make it major. Again, the E chord is going to naturally fall minor. The four chord or F chord in this case is major. The five chord, that's a five, Roman numeral five, is G is a major chord. A would be a minor chord also. We're not going to worry about the diminished chords right now because they're not used so much in popular music. And it's a little bit more advanced. We'll talk about that in a later video. So the chords we're going to be dealing with are one through six. And in the case of C, that's going to be three major chords and three minor chords. Many, many progressions are built with these six chords. And if you pretty much choose any three or four of these chords and play them together, they're going to sound okay because they make sense to your ear. You're used to hearing it. A good rule of thumb is if you're making a progression, if it ends on the five chord or the four chord, it's going to sound more normal because both of those chords tend to want to go back to the one. And you want this sense of motion. So for an example, if I were to play a one chord, a three chord, a two chord, and then finally end with either a four or five, I'll say a five chord, that's going to sound normal. The five chord wants to pull you back to C and start the cycle over again. The G chord or the five chord has a strong pull to the one. The four chord, a softer pull. And I'm going to demonstrate these in just a minute. So common progressions are designated by the numbers of the chords. So we're going to use terminology like that's a one, four, five progression. What I'm saying is that's a using the one chord in the key, a four chord, and a five chord. For this purpose, it's easier to talk about numbers because that way when you change keys, the numbers stay the same, even though the chords change. I've written down here the scale of G, and I did this particularly to show you how it applies to a different scale. So for the G scale, the one chord is going to be a G chord. 
the four chord is going to be a C chord, and the five chord is going to be a D chord. This same concept applies to any other key. If I wrote the notes out of here for another key and chose the one, the four, and the five, now you'd have basically that same song or same progression in a new key. The most common chords used for popular music are the one chord, the four chord, and the five chord. And if you want to extend that to a lot more songs, add the six chord, which is usually a minor chord. Again, we're talking diatonic out of this scale. So in the case of C, four chord F, G, and A minor, you'd have many, many popular songs built on those four chords. And in different orders, a very common order in the 50s for 50s style of music would be a one, six, four, five. And I'll demonstrate that in a minute. A sound that we'd associate with tons and tons of popular music would be the one chord going to a five chord, then to the six chord, and then to the four chord. Now it usually cycles around, starts again, one, five, six, four, and so on. Okay, with that little bit of a music theory as a foundation, let me go on to the guitar and show you what some of these sound like. That was a one, four, five progression. One of the foundation progressions of all time, or foundation common chord pattern. One, four, five in the key of G. G chord is the one chord, C chord is the four chord, D is the five chord. That could be the chord progression for La Bamba. In the key of G, that could be uh, The Cars, My Best Friend's Girl. It's the pattern used for Good Riddance by Green Day, for Stirred Up by Bob Marley, and many, many, many more. Perhaps I'll put a list somewhere on the, on the website. Anyway, one, four, five. It's a great way to practice your chords because you're going to see this pattern either for the whole song, parts of the song, or sometimes just included in very small parts of a song. This progression is powerful because the five chord in any key has this feeling of forward motion going back to the one chord. So it creates this kind of motion. Now building on that progression would be the next one, one, four, five, four. That would be songs like da, 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 da. about da 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 That's one, four, five, four, Louis, Louis, oh, or a wild thing. You make my heart sing. And again, many, many songs go back to that four. Again, all built on this one, four, five, one, four, five, four, one, four, five, back to the one. One, four, five, one, four, five, four, five, and so on and so on. Now, venturing into a whole nother billions of songs would be adding the six chord to that. So, in the key of G, that G is the one chord, the C is the four chord, D is the five, we're gonna add a six chord to it. In the key of G, that's E minor. G, A, B, C, D, E. And remember the six is minor. So here's a very common pattern, often called the 50s progression. That's a one to a six, four, and to five. And again, many songs, particularly, they're gonna have a sound that you associate with that style or with that era. Something like the Beatles, this boy. How about Elvis? When no one else can understand me When everything I do is wrong Or um, Unchained Melody, that our, my kids call it the theme from Ghost. Whoa, my love My darling I found the Or her, uh, this is the hard one. No, oh, I can't go any higher than that. Okay, you get the idea. Oh, how about this? Oh, Donna. Oh, Donna. And 
many, many, many more. Again, you, you can kind of remind you of that era of the 50s. And it's used in pop songs as well, and sometimes to give that kind of feeling of kind of bringing you back, depending on the instrumentation. Of course, there's a lot more to songs than just the chord progression. By the time you add the rhythm and the melody and everything, it's sometimes a little hard to hear these progressions. Now, one of the most popular modern day versions of this is one, five, six, four. It's just a kind of a jumbling up of that same pattern, the same four chords. You've heard this in many, many, many songs. Just a few would be Down Under by Men at Work, uh, Don't Stop Believing by the band Journey, Can You Feel the Love Tonight by Elton John, No Woman No Cry by Bob Marley, and many, many more. This is a great progression to practice because it's a good way to practice the chords in a key and you're training your ear at the same time that you're training your fingers to go in places they're going to go often. Now, to a lesser degree, those same four chords have been used in many different orders. Here's another one. One, four, six, five. One, four. Another way of using these same four chords is to start on the sixth chord. Now this creates a progression that gives a little more sad feel, a minor sound. So it sounds like this. Six, four, one, and five. This would be the verse and chorus of the song Zombie by Cranberries. It's the verse in Africa by Toto. And the whole song Apologize by One Republic. These are just samples of common chord patterns and some of the more popular ones. I would recommend you practicing common chord patterns and then stretching, adding chords, adding chords out of the key that would be diatonic. And you'll find many that make sense and sound good. Throw in the three chords, so in the key of G, G, a, B minor, listen. Three chord, six chord. Another good progression, sounds good. And pretty much if you take any four chords or three chords out of the key, it's gonna sound like something. Hey, it's been good hanging out with you for this lesson. If you have any questions or any comments, I'd love to hear from you. Go ahead and write something down in the comments below. Also, if you found this useful, you're a perfect person for my Real Guitar Success Academy. If you'd like to learn more about that, I'd love to have you there. I'll put some information in the description so you can get over there. Thanks again. See you soon.